This presentation is an analysis of Sylvia Plath's poem, Daddy. Sylvia Plath's poem, Daddy, is one of her most famous poems and one of the best examples of confessional poetry. Confessional poetry is a style of poetry that became popular in the mid-20th century that dealt with personal subject matter that previously had not been openly discussed in American poetry, such as private experiences with and feelings about death, trauma, and depression, and it's told in the first person. The poem is made of 16 five-line stanzas in which the speaker uses the first person to directly address her daddy, who represents more than just her father, but male dominance in general. The tone or author's attitude toward her subject is very angry and violent toward her father and male dominance in general, which he seems to represent for her. The speaker of the poem Daddy compares herself to a Nazi, a vampire, a devil, a brute, and a resurrected figure in the form of her husband. The Nazi references such as Ach du, German for Ah you, Ich, 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 German for I, 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 Panzerman, which is a German tank, the mentioning of Jews, swastikas, fascists, a Mein Kampf look, etc., shows the anger and implies that her daddy is associated with the tyrannical reign of Hitler. Plath herself said the speaker of the poem is a girl with an Electra complex, which is what psychologist Carl Gustav Jung called a girl's psychosexual competition with her mother for possession of her father, which is the female version of the Oedipus complex in boys. If this is the case, the angry tone could be explained as the girl's anger for her father at dying when she was only ten, as the poem says. At the height of this stage, in other words, she may be angry over the sense of abandonment she felt with her father's death. The speaker uses a sing-song, nursery rhyme scheme and organization, establishing her as a childish figure in relation to her authoritative father, which the use of the name Daddy also reinforces, as this is the name a child would typically give her father. The ooh sound used throughout the poem, as in you do not do, you do not do, sounds childish. The poem's childish rhythm makes the poem ironic and sinister in juxtaposition to its angry, violent content. It sounds chant-like and feels almost like a curse of her father. Daddy has been praised by feminists for its unadulterated rage towards male dominance, represented in the poem by the father, who is also compared to a Nazi vampire devil brute and her ex-husband. The speaker of the poem feels the only way to free herself from the godlike power and his patriarchal presence, shown when she describes him as a giant statue, a marble heavy a bag of God, ghastly statue, with one gray toe big as a Frisco seal, is by killing him. Since he is already dead, she must kill his spirit that haunts her like a vampire, so she feels she must put a stake through his fat black heart so that the villagers can dance on his grave, in the form of an exorcism. The poem is an expression of her desire to be free of the power and control she feels her dead father has over her. The poem can also be read as not just about her father, but about male dominance over women in general. Plath may have felt this way because her father left her and her mother alone in a very patriarchal time period, the 1950s to 60s, in America, making it hard to get by without him, because her husband Ted Hughes had just left her alone with her two children to care for when he left her for another woman, or because she felt society in general was not fair to women. It is important not to make too many parallels between the speaker in the poem and the author, however. There are definite parallels between the author and the speaker in the poem, however, not enough to say that the two are synonymous. For example, the speaker's father died when she was ten, but Plath's died when she was eight. The speaker's father is said to be a Nazi, and Plath's father was a German immigrant, but not an actual Nazi. The speaker and Plath both made success, unsuccessful attempts at suicide. The speaker's husband is said to drink her blood for seven years, and Plath, at the time she wrote the poem, had been married to her husband for seven years before he left her for another woman. Why doesn't the author make exact parallels with her life? 
This is probably because the poem is not meant to be taken as, a, as completely autobiographical. This allows the speaker to represent more than just herself, but perhaps all women who are oppressed by men or male dominance. And Daddy can also represent more than just the speaker's father and be a symbol of male dominance and repression over women, which she, she suggests is evil by comparing him to a Nazi vampire and her cheating husband. In fact, Plath's father was a fairly normal, loving father before he died when Plath was eight, so it is possible that she felt more oppressed by the loss of him or the memory of him as a fatherless daughter than by her actual father. In the time period when he died, the 1940s, Plath and her mother probably struggled to survive without a male breadwinner, as her mother had to move them from the coast to teach advanced clerical studies at Boston University after his death. Sylvia Plath's poem Daddy has many characteristics of postmodernism, such as the use of stream of consciousness, emotionalism, fragmentation, and a troubled topic, killing her father and comparing him to a Nazi. It uses paradox in that she says she must kill him even though he is already dead, and that she kills two men when she kills him, which also makes her an unreliable narrator, along with the claims that such as when she says she is through with him, but one wonders if she really is, if she's still so obsessed emotionally with her dead father years after his death. It also uses an unrealistic and downright impossible plot, since she says she will kill a man who is already dead. Additionally, it uses temporal distortion, or the use of a non-linear timeline, in that she claims to be a Jew being shipped off to various Nazi prison camps years after they were closed. Finally, it uses maximalism, which is a disorganized, lengthy, and highly detailed form of writing. The chaotic and difficult-to-follow poem without a clear meaning and the possibility of various interpretations is typical of postmodernism.